You can't just remove permanent hair colour. No, no, no. And the chances are that the process will involve bleach. But don't worry because I'm here to help you. So keep on watching. Hello and welcome to the world of Craig. Yes, that's me, I'm Craig, and this is my channel where we get into all things hair and sometimes a little bit of beauty. So, removing hair colour. Yes, I do have a video here on my channel that takes you through my process, but I have recently been getting lots of comments of, I want to remove my hair colour, what do I do? How, you know, can I remove my hair colour without using bleach? That's never really gonna happen, in my opinion and successfully and you know comments 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 dms on other platforms so i thought well let's make a video that just explains why it's not a simple process but i do have that full process video which i will link in the description as you may have noticed we're in a slightly different setting today there's a heat wave here in the uk and i have so much to do i've just got back from holiday i've been so busy in the salon but i really wanted to film this video because you know, my, my, one of my favourite things about this channel, about my channel, is that you ask me questions and I can reply to them. So I thought, let's make a video that sums everything up of why it's not that straightforward. Okay, let's get into it. Looking at that clip, I have just toned my hair, at, yes, my bleached hair, and you can see that it is just on the edge of being slightly too violet. I mean, I love it, but... Yeah, there's a whole load of videos here that take you through toning and the principles and the theory and icy tonism, because I know that's also very popular, but it's interesting in that I just had just a tiny little bit too much violet into my pastel direct dye and my hair is just on the borderline. Anyway, I digress. Of course, if you enjoy this video and you find it helpful, you know exactly what to do. You sharing this with somebody means that my content gets pushed out to more people and that's what we're all about here on my channel. Now, very briefly, and we're gonna keep this brief because I want this video to be a shorter one. Good luck with that, Craig. How does permanent color work? And this is the crux. Permanent oxidative hair dye, okay? So when you're mixing a permanent color, whether it's a cream, a liquid, a gel, or whatever it is, a paste, with, with hydrogen peroxide, which is the catalyst that makes it work, whenever you are doing that process, and the dye molecules in that permanent hair color go into the cortex of the hair that's right in the center of the hair, okay? Those dye molecules bond to the keratin in the hair, which is what makes up the hair. It's a protein, amino acid, and those dye molecules bond to, the, to that part of the hair, the keratin molecules, and that is why the process is called permanent hair colour. Now, permanent hair colours can fade over time if you have your hair coloured or you do it yourself at home and your colour fades over time, but those dye molecules are always permanently bonded to the hair. The hair's internal structure has changed. That's why it's not as simple. I'm getting very animated. That's why it's not as simple as just removing it. So if you only take just one thing away from this video, please let it be that. That if you do any permanent, even some demi-permanents, but if you do any permanent hair colouring process to the hair, there's a chemical reaction between the dye molecules and other ingredients in the permanent colour itself and the hydrogen peroxide that opens up the hair's cuticle, doesn't open it but it makes it swell, so the dye molecules can get in and then after the oxidation process has finished, those molecules are bonded to the keratin in the hair. So now we know how it works, what is the solution? Now before we get into this, I've said it once, I'll say it again, I'll probably say it again at the end of the video, I do have that full process video, constantly telling people where things are, because it's very tricky on social platforms, I know, I understand, I hear you all. I do have that video, I'll link it in the description. Now, the thing I get the most is, I want to remove, and if I can find a couple of comments, I'll pop them on screen, I want to remove my permanent hair colour, but I don't want to use 
bleach. Well, I'm afraid that you are going to have to at some point. There are two main ways of removing permanent hair colour. And I would say that 90% of the time, the comments or the questions I'm getting are from people that want to remove darker colour or a colour that is deeper that they don't like and they want to change their hair colour to be lighter, okay? There are two main ways of removing permanent hair colour. The first one is a sodium oxymethylene method, which is all in that video, which is a two-part thing, which basically removes the dye molecules. Once you have done that on a permanent hair colouring using sodium oxymethylene, the result will always, always be warm if you're very dark brunette. And obviously it's very different for each person. Every single situation is different, which is why I can't give you very specific formulas or very specific help because I can't see you and you're all very different and everyone has very different hair, which does make it tricky as an educator in hair. So once you've removed using, and I would always use that first, but once you've done that, the results will always be warm. If you've gone from very dark, say you are a black box dye, you've gone from very dark, it's gonna be bright ginger. Then the only way to remove that warmth, which has been left behind by the permanent hair colour, by those dye molecules that have been deposited and they've, been, they've attached to the keratin permanently, once you have removed those and it's very warm, then you're going to need to use a lightener in order to get it up to be lighter and then so that you can have a cooler result. If you want to be a redhead, that's great. When you want bright copper hair, then that's brilliant. And as hair professionals, if you're a hair pro watching this, yes, you, then you know exactly what I mean. You know, I do a lot of colour changes. I don't call them corrections because I think that's very negative. I do a lot of colour changes. And it's funny how if somebody, I do a consultation and they, they've got very dark hair and they say, oh, I need to, I really want to be a redhead. And then I'm like, okay, then that's quite straightforward. The sun is going in. Come back, come back. So, once you've done that, you're going to need to use bleach, otherwise, otherwise you're going to have a very warm result. Now, it might interest you to know, it might surprise you to know that a lot of professional and a lot of pro and um, drugstore hair colour removers contain bleach. I'm not talking about the sodium oxymethylene, that is something in a category all of its own, okay? But I'm talking about hair colour removers that come in sachets that are normally powders, or they might come in a bottle but they're a powder and you mix them with something. They are a persulfate, so they're either sodium persulfate or potassium persulfate, which is bleach, okay? So, in my opinion, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, if you've removed the colour with a sodium oxymethylene remover, then you're going to have to bleach the hair. But obviously, there are things involved like ratios, volumes of peroxide, you know, the process itself, of which there are loads and loads of videos here on my channel. How many times do I say that throughout a video? So yes, bleach is always going to be involved. Just a couple of other things that we should talk about very briefly here. If you are going to use bleach on your hair and it is compromised, you know, the condition is compromised or the strength is compromised, be really careful. I'm not just suggesting that people wade in or gung-ho onto their hair that's already been compromised or, you know, it has structural strength problems and is already damaged. Be really, really careful. Strand testing is key. And then I also think it's important to mention that you will see on many social platforms, perhaps even here on the tube of you, you might see people saying, you can remove permanent hair colour with vitamin C. You can remove permanent hair colour if you do seven cartwheels and stand on your head. You can remove permanent hair colour if you have a mermaid's tears. No, you can't. You can't. They're not telling you the truth. They are telling you what you want to hear. They, and it's, you're going to be disappointed. So at the end of the day, sodium oxymethylene colour removers will take you so far. And then if you want to get rid of that warmth, you will need to use, yes, bleach. One final thing that I've just thought of <laughs> as the sun comes back out it is worth mentioning that if you have gone through that process and you have lifted out permanent hair colour, maybe you have just gone straight in with bleach, with lightener, which you can do as well. I do do that often. You know, sometimes 
you need the energy of lightener and peroxide in order to remove and I know lots of my pro colleagues hello yes you I know lots of my pro colleagues do that as well and that's perfectly acceptable you know that's a professional process and it can be a process that you do at home as well but once you have removed it and you've got the level of lift and the canvas lots of videos about that too here on my channel once you've got the required level of lift then you're going to recolor the hair of course that hair has been through a big process so anything you then recolor the hair with my preference would be a demi permanent color or the layers of demi permanent color so i might do something first and see how that hits and then if that's not deep enough or you know it's not cool enough then i would do something else but anything you apply to the hair after that sort of chemical process is going to take quickly it might appear deeper and darker than you think it might be if you're going with something cool cool colors absorb the light warm colors reflect the light so if you want to cool something down by using maybe one of my many toning videos that's here on my channel be aware that it might look much deeper or darker because the hair's already been processed which makes it slightly more porous or very porous in some cases which makes it much more acceptable accepting that's the one of that demi-permanent color so always be very cautious and go in carefully strand testing when you've removed the colour first. So just to conclude, hair colour removal, permanent hair colour removal is always a process in my opinion that can involve a sodium oxymethylene colour remover but it's always going to involve bleach. I really hope that that point comes across. Remembering that those permanent hair colour molecules, those dye precursors that go into the hair, that go into the hair are then bonding with the keratin. That is why the process is permanent. There you go. As I've already said, I've said it loads of times, but there are over 700 bits of content, I think, now here on my channel. One of them being that colour removal process. There's short form, on, um, short form content here on my channel about colour removal processes, and there is an entire toning playlist. They're all videos that I really, a lot of them that I make Sometimes I'm in the gym on the treadmill and a video comes to me, but often they're videos that I make in a reply to, to a comment that someone's left or a conversation I've had in a class that I might, an in-person class that I might have taken. So, you know, my channel is all about everybody having the best hair that they can have, regardless of how much money they have to spend or whether you're a hair professional like myself and you don't have access to a lot of education. I make the content here on my channel for you. A huge thank you if you've got to the end of the video. I really appreciate your support here on my channel and you all mean a huge amount to me. I love my channel so much. A huge thanks for watching this. I think I've already said that. You all take lots of care and I'll see you all in the next one. Mm -hmm.